Hello everyone, my name is Ark and welcome back to a discussion video of sorts. This is going to be mostly a rant on my end. Uh, because Super Saiyan Daima Goku Mini was announced a couple of weeks ago at the Tamashi Nations 2024 display. Um, and people are indifferent about him because they should have they said that they should men, uh, should have included this guy or the actual head sculpt within the original Daima Goku and I sort of agree in an instance but at the same time I would like to have another Daima Goku with the Super Saiyan heads that way I can have two displays on my own but that's just my preference would have been nice to have the base head and the Super Saiyan head absolutely but that's not how Bandai works unless you're the boy from the future trunks but uh, we only have one still image of this guy so far, and that's pretty much just him after transforming Super Saiyan, and that's how they displayed him and the actual uh, showcase for this guy. And we have a couple of different images, and this was from the most recent uh, world tour from um, Dragon Ball Daima, and uh, people, uh, well, I'm not happy because I had not noticed this until now. So, you can see right here, on the bottom right hand side corner, he is a Premium Bandai exclusive. And that is the topic of discussion here. Why? Why is he a Premium Bandai exclusive? I, that's what I don't get. That's... why? These guys are not going to be premium bandai exclusive from the looks of it, which is nice, great, love that. But why are we restricting it to a premium bandai exclusive? I don't get that. That's the thing that I don't get. Like, I understand there's a lot of people wanting uh, Cell Saga and other stuff from Daima. This guy is already a rehash of the, G the Daima Goku that we literally just got less than a month ago in uh, stores pretty much everywhere. He should be coming out in US retail sites very, very soon at this point. Vegeta just released as well, and they're probably gonna do a premium Bandai exclusive version for Vegeta as well. But why are we continuing with the premium Bandai bullshit? Like, they, they just tweeted this out 35, uh, 45 minutes ago. Coming soon, Dragon Ball SH Figure Arts Super Saiyan Son Goku Mini. Daima is coming to Premium Bandai. Awesome! Great! We're gonna get a restricted Super Saiyan head sculpt. But hey, it has free shipping. That's all that matters because their bullshit $10 shipping is annoying as hell. And FedEx just loses your packages for no reason whatsoever. Uh, that's a whole topic of discussion right there. But why is he Premium Bandai? It's literally just a Super Saiyan head sculpt. From what we know so far, we do not know what else he comes with. Granted, they've only showed very little from the other Daima figures. But at the same time, why are we restricting this to a Premium Bandai release? After this is done, it's done. You probably won't be able to find them unless you buy them from the secondhand market. And if people buy enough of them, or if people, actually, if people don't buy enough of them, that's going to make him rare. He's going to go up in price a lot. Especially if Daima ends up with, like, some really good battles and everything from the time of recording this episode. There's currently seven episodes right now. And episode eight seems to be a banger of an episode with the first sort of uh, high stakes uh, battle with one of the Tamagotchi. Uh, or Tamagami. Um, not Tamagotchi. Sorry. But... This is what I don't like about Premium Bandai. They're restricting all of these things for just a bunch of uh, bullshit, in my opinion. Because why are we restricting such a wanted figure on Premium Bandai? Like, can we just stop doing that? Like, right now, he's a, like, Daima Goku's available to everyone in the US. If you wanted to get them there through Premium Bandai, you'll be paying $10 extra for shipping and taxes and on top of that. But why are we continuing to do this? Like, we just had the Super Saiyan, like, this is the um, 
New York Comic Con exclusive, but let's look at let's look at this real quick. We have the medical machine, which should have been a general release. I don't know why this is a premium Bandai exclusive. Why are it, why is the GT line a premium Bandai exclusive? Like, come on, Pan is a premium Bandai. Super 17 is his premium Bandai. GT Trunks, which I just made a video on, which granted he's not that good, just got a premium Bandai release. Why is he premium Bandai? When he specifically comes for an accessory with this guy. This guy's never gonna get reissued. At least not anytime soon. Probably five years from now, but who knows. Why are we continuing to put wanted releases under the premium Bandai umbrella? Like, why are we doing this? Full power Frieza. Kui, even though not a lot of people care about Kui, this could have been a general release, but they didn't want to, so I can understand that. This Vegeta, one of the most anime accurate Vegetas that we have from Tamashi themselves, restricted behind a pretty much um, premium wall. Why are we continuing to do this? I didn't understand the exclusives being put on here, but Toyotaro Goku, I can actually see that. It's a V-Jump exclusive, sort of like a V-Jump quote-unquote exclusive. But Mecha Frieza, King Cold... Metal Cooler, Android 20, Yamcha of all things? Come on. And these prices are, are outrageous. I would not be surprised if this guy ends up being $65 or at least $50. Mark, mark my words, I think this guy is going to be $50. I don't think he's going to be anything less than that. Yeah, granted, they have the $35 figures. Like, Beast Gohan should have never been an exclusive. Android 19 should have, not, should have not been an exclusive. Third form Frieza, Broly, Pan. Second form Frieza, all of these should have never been premium Bandai exclusives. The the Gammas, Turles, Android 21. Well, she was actually not a, a store exclusive, pretty much. Not necessarily premium Bandai. But Krillin... Sarbon, Dodoria, the ones that people want the most are not completely available to everyone. Kefla, Beerus, well, these are completely different. Uh, the set, the 17 and 18 from Super, Tian and Chiaotsu, Cooler, all of these releases, they we could have so many general releases right now, and no one would be batting an eye. But this is our this is the, the most stupid thing ever. Why are we getting this guy as a premium Bandai exclusive? That's what I don't get. Why is he a premium Bandai exclusive? What makes him a premium Bandai exclusive? The Super Saiyan hair? I'm actually trying to get my head around, like wrap my head around this because this is just bad. I don't like this method of like uh, this practice. I don't like this practice that they're doing with just bunch of premium bandai bullshit it's the most annoying thing ever because yes everyone has a chance at getting them and it releases at the same time for everyone but at the same time as someone like myself that does youtube reviews if i review this guy i'm gonna be like you're gonna have to get them through a japanese retail site where you could probably still get them for a re decent price or you're going to have to buy him from the secondhand market because guess what? This guy is not available on Premium Bandai anymore. Wow. Now, if they keep this guy just available forever, that'd be great. So I'm going to hold myself until they actually release the full details for him. So, yeah, that's my, my little rant. I wanted to blow off some steam after seeing the Premium Bandai post because I was not expecting this guy to be premium Bandai whatsoever. I thought he was going to be just a general release, like pretty much everyone else. But no, he's premium Bandai, so I'm not happy. <laughs> if he comes with the Daima stand, sure, maybe, whatever. But that's about it. That's all the time I have for you guys. Let me know what you guys think about this whole situation because I do not like it. I know a lot of people don't like it. But yeah, I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.